Well, folks, I am an ex-Catholic monk. And um, my life has, my adult life has been very much taken up with service of the Lord, either as a missionary, a monastic, a seminarian, a teacher of religious studies for years and years. Um, I've been involved closely in the Catholic Church, in the seminary, missions, monasteries, in schools, and then have been involved in the Eastern Orthodox Church since 2017, on and off, on and off. Now, here's the thing. Humility is often preached in orthodoxy as the great virtue. Apparently, this is something that, you know, St. John Chrysostom had had uh, recommended. Lots of Christians have written and taught about the great benefit of humility. Recently, Father Zacharias down in Essex has said, do you know, Humility gives all space to God. We know that God resists the proud, gives his grace to the humble. That's from Isaiah 55, I believe. Where will you build a temple for me? The whole world is my footstool, but they, on this I will place my eyes, on the humble who trembles at my word. Isaiah 55 there. Do you know, it strikes me that the most humble thing, guys, is not kissing a man's hands who may or may not prove later to be a wretch. The most humble thing is to believe God's word and believe in the promises. Believe what it says. You know, what does Scripture say to us? The Father loveth the Son and has given all things into his hand. This is John 3, 35 and 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. So why are you believing in the Son today, on the Son of God, Jesus Christ? You have eternal life. Oh, I don't I could fall away. You're resisting God and his word. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life. It doesn't say he that doesn't fast on a Wednesday and Friday. It doesn't say he that doesn't keep the Lenten and Advent fasts. He that doesn't kiss the hands of the priests, kiss the icons on entering and leaving the church. Doesn't bow and prostrate. Doesn't robe up. And respect those who, or respect those who do. It's just this. And we overcomplicate the faith because we don't believe this. Why do we have an Athos monastery? Why do we have people up sticking and going off to monasteries if we truly believe this? Because we don't believe it. We don't believe it doesn't make sense to us that Jesus Christ died for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that God died for us when we were yet ungodly and clothed us in his righteousness. No, we won't have it. We want to clothe ourselves. Okay, with the help of God's grace, I'll take communion, then I'll do it. I'll go to confession, then I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. I'll conquer my lusts. I'll conquer my passions. I'll conquer my anger. I'll conquer the world. With Christ's example, with the saints, I'll do it. It appeals to the flesh. It appeals to the flesh. St. Paul writes about it in Colossians. Beware of false asceticism. It feeds nothing but the flesh. It has the Appearance of holiness. It just feeds the flesh. Only adhering to the promises of God that we find in scriptures. True humility. Which is accepting God at his word. 
is going to save us. The scriptures nowhere say that we are shockingly holy and can become so. Nowhere. The scriptures give us no license to hero worship anyone in this world other than Jesus Christ. No one else. No one else. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's it. If that's too if that shelf is too bare for you, then you've got a problem with this. You know that because and that's pride. We want we want to glorify human nature. We want to glory in human achievement. Oh, Elder Joseph the Hezekiah. Oh, the desert saints. Oh, this, oh, that. And Protestants do the same. John Calvin, Beza, Luther. True humility. If we're really is soaking in the Bible, if we're really in that Bible, we see there's only one hero in the story. And that's God. And I think that was the battle cry of the Re Reformation. Today is Reformation Day, so-called Halloween. Let God be God. Let God be God. Accept him at his word. Believe in his promises. And that's it. But we, we want more. We want to achieve something. Carve a name out for ourselves. Climb some kind of mystical ladder. God comes to us. We receive him through his word. And humbly take him at his word. If Jesus tells me I'm saved. Seated in the heavenly places with him. Who am I to say, no, I'm not. I'm just in England. I'm just in a sub, in, in a filthy suburbs of a filthy city. And unless I get my butt to some shockingly holy monastery, I ain't going to get there. We're trying to save ourselves. True humility, then. It's not in appearance. It's just taking God at his word. I remember, and with this I'll finish, a guy some years back from work, a teacher friend, he'd come round. He'd been a part of the Navigators, uh, a missionary group that works closely with universities and such like. He came round and we just went through the Gospel of John together. And I would start doing my elucubrations and my philosophizing and theologizing. He would just gently bring it back to the scriptures and say, but what does the scripture say? But what does the scripture say? I think if we apply that with the gospel of John, with the gospel, you know, with any of the gospels, particularly, you know, with Romans, with Galatians, with the Hebrews, we start to, with Col Colossians, with Ephesians. We start to see this salvation by asceticism, this trying to achieve salvation. Is it biblical? Certainly we must work. Certainly we must follow Christ, but we're not going to follow him unto salvation. That was accomplished for us on the cross in his death and in his resurrection we just have to take hold of it like the sick man takes hold of the medicine there's no glory in it for us none whatsoever so all glory hunters must look elsewhere all humble glory hunters <laughs> no such thing no such thing. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved.